morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are BJLS Engineering, and we were tasked with the request for proposal of a solar umbrella on San Diego State University's campus in the, uh, on, on Centennial Walkway. After a uh, meeting with the campus architect and public works official, we were informed that the structure actually hinders an historical view onto San Diego State's campus. Therefore, we had to move our project location to the F parking lot, which is just, uh, just south of parking structure one on College Avenue. Our team members consist of myself, Michael Balch, as a construction manager, William Lee is our geotechnical engineer, Tim Johnson is our structural engineer, and Jeff Sparks is our solar engineer and structural uh, consultant. Following is a brief explanation of our construction plan. This here is a 3D rendering of, uh, of, our, of our structure. It has four reinforced concrete columns, eight feet high, that hold up the entire steel frame structure, which has 486 photovoltaic panels lined north to south all along it with five arrays of panels. The construction was separated into five phases, with phase one being mobilization and demolition, uh, basically the construction preparation for the project and site layout. Phase two is the foundation, which is comprised 100% of reinforced concrete that William Lee will talk to you about later. Uh, phase three is the structural aspect of the project, which is 150 by 150 foot elevated steel truss frame system. Phase four is the solar installation, which as I said was 486 photovoltaic panels, which has a 98 kilowatt uh, output and it is warranted for 25 years, however we expect it to last at least 30 to 40. Uh, phase five is our closeout. The schedule for the project all hinders on the start date uh, of June 1st. If we were to get that June 1st start date, that means the project would have to be approved January 1st of 2011. Uh, reason being is for a six month minimum lead time for, uh, for steel requisitioning and in fabrication. Uh, that being said, if we were to be able to start on June 1st, we could finish on September 5th which is 97 calendar days or seven working days. The reason why we want to start on June 1st is because it's during the summer in which there's less pedestrian traffic which promotes a safer area for the construction site. Our, uh, our cost breakdown is uh, a little over one, or a little under, excuse me, 1.3 million for materials and labor, 72,000 for equipment, and 355,000 for general conditions requirements and miscellaneous costs. The total, a little over 1.7 million. Key selections with the equipment were two backhoe loaders, along with three dump trucks, uh, a telescopic handler to excavate the uh, grade beams, pile, and pile caps, which we will talk about in a second, and also the uh, the hydraulic uh, wheel mounted crane in order to hoist the steel members and photovoltaic uh, configurations. Uh, lastly, our site layout uh, will consist of, this is here, this here is the F parking lot with the perimeter running all along the asphalt line here. There will be an access gate here, an egress gate here. This will be a pedestrian walkway that will allow students and faculty to get to this bridge here and back to their cars over here. Uh, there will be an overhead protection uh, wood frame structure protecting the students right here and faculty as they walk by and our actual structure will be approximately right there. Uh, that does conclude our construction plan for today and uh, I'd like to introduce William Lee, our geotechnical engineer. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Hi, I'm William Lee. I'm in charge of the geotechnical analysis and foundation design. First of all, we have to go into soil testing. We have three choices of soil tests. We have either choose from SPT, CPT, or nuclear testing. CPT was unreliable and nuclear testing was over expensive, so we ended up with CPT testing. From CPT testing, we had three sets of data that we see. We have flea friction, tip resistance, and poor water pressure. From this, we calculated the five types of soil. At two meter depth, we have sandy silt. 5.5 meters, we have sand and sandy silt. 8.5 meter, we have sand. 14.9, we still had sand. And 20.2 meters downward, all clay. Our selected pile foundation 
was 5.5 meters, so we neglected any clay settlement. Now this leads us to our pile designs. Okay. We had a choice between deep foundations and spread footing, which is shallow foundation. For shallow foundation, we found it unsuited for our project because the risk overturning. For piles, we have reinforced concrete instead of wood or steel because wood couldn't take the bearing capacity and steel was over expensive. And to our pile cap, I choose the shape of a square so that when the load is acting on it, it wouldn't create any section loading along the sides. And I have four pile caps, four, sorry, four pile per cap. And now we're going into grade beams. For our grade beam, we chose this instead of slab because slab was massive, over expensive. Grade beam and slab were just the same amount of force. So grade beam was definitely a choice over slab. And then for our connection wise, the grade beam, each side would connect to a pile cap. And the four piles would connect to that pile cap below. Above it will be the column above, which are, is our structure. And let me introduce you to Tim, our structural engineer. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Um, for the structural engineering portion of this project, we had several key considerations. Um, it was requested that we build a solar umbrella, and that is, that is a very broad request in the sense that there, there's not too many solar umbrellas out there in, in operation at the moment. And so in looking at this, this project, we had several key considerations for how we wanted to go about designing this umbrella structurally. Um, one of the most important was aesthetics. Uh, after all, this project is not isolated. It's not just a solar panel installation, it's a solar panel installation with a purpose and a meaning. We wanted to make sure that the solar panels look nice and, and are appealing and, and flaunt SDSU's image as a green campus. Um, it is going to be situated in a prominent location, so we did take that into consideration. We didn't want a rigid looking steel frame floating up in the air. We wanted something that, that looks nice and, and has some um, smooth curves and not just hard lines. Uh, and we did want to make sure the solar panels were visible at the same time. For the materials, we, we considered several options and choices. Uh, of these were primarily wood, uh, reinforced concrete, or steel. Um, for making these considerations with aesthetics and other things, we, we didn't feel reinforced concrete was appropriate. It would be very big, bulky sections in the air, not very appealing. It would just look like a big block of concrete, essentially. And we didn't, we didn't want that for the umbrella. We wanted it to have, to have flavor and appeal. Um, we did not choose wood, partially because the client did want this structure situated on a single support to give it the umbrella sort of feel. And steel would handle these, these spans for uh, that sort of uh, layout much easier, much nicer. And we also had concerns for um, such a large installation with fire, and we did not want any um, possibility of the structure collapsing due to fire damage, should that occur. Not likely, but we did want to be safe. And uh, lastly, we wanted to make sure the, the structure could handle as many solar panels up top as possible while being as cost efficient as possible. Uh, once again, we're looking at the rendering here. You can see the layout where it comes down. Um, you have the large steel frames, um, the connected truss members that go down to the single reinforced col concrete column supports. And you can see that we have very long high, uh, spans high up in the air that, that do need to carry significant weight. And the steel members uh, were, were quite heavy uh, to accommodate um, such loading. Um, here's a side view looking at the, the layout of the trusses. They, they all connect in um, a, a square grid fashion. So you have one truss coming out like this, and it creates a simple square uh, that is 25 feet high and spans 150 foot by 150 foot in either direction. When designing for the solar panels, it, it wasn't simply a matter of uh, build a structure and put some panels on top. We did have several key considerations. Uh, we wanted to cover the maximum area of solar panels possible in the most cost-effective way possible. Um, we wanted to make sure that 
the weight of the structure was a minimum as well to reduce the cost of steel because this structure is designed to produce energy and have positive payback. Um, for the panel layout, after several iterations and designs with the uh, energy consultant, we came up with uh, a series of girders spaced at six feet facing north-south that span the entire length of the structure. And perpendicular to these girders, uh, we have solar panel rails that run and, and carry the panels. Uh, the spacing was, was optimized with consultation with uh, appropriate parties. And we wanted to avoid uh, excessive optimization. We didn't want to have a, a maximum number of panels on top and at the same time have a cost inefficient structure where you, you're increasing your cost 10% for maybe 1% more panels. That just, that wasn't efficient. And lastly, going to the details of the uh, solar design, pass you over to Jeff Sparks, our energy.